Well, hi, intrepid viewers. We're only less than one week into 2019, and he's talking national emergency. Uh, you'd have to think he is the national emergency, wouldn't you, really? And I hope you've got your parachutes ready because it's going to be a doozy. So things are coming thick and fast. I've actually just recorded a video on a lot of the new developments with Kushner, Don Jr. and the Russians. But I thought I'd make this one and upload it first before we start getting our heads into all that again in the new year. But fascinating stuff has come to light. And of course, the spy swap, is there going to be one with Paul Whelan and Bettina? <gasps> want to know, want to know. But I thought we'll have to do one now on how are the GOP going to handle Trump? Just in January, we won't be too ambitious, will we viewers? Let's see. What's going to happen with the GOP and Trump in January? It's This is really on them. You know, look, it's one thing to put up a populist um, prime minister or premier or president in this case, but it's another thing to keep them in power when they are demonstrably mad. That is the responsibility of their party. Right, so let's have a look. The GOP, Trump, January. What can we find out? What are they doing? Oops. The star. Oh, inspiration, hope. Mega good. Find it hard to reconcile with what we're talking about, but you never know, do you, viewers? You never know. Okay. So, the GOP Trump in January. Okay. The card that fell out, the star. What's happening here? Uh, 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 uh. Well, they get another good card at the end of January. A few complications between now and then, but mm, they're going to have to do something or maybe not. Maybe that's just wishful thinking on my part. Okay, so they get the star in the center. Hopefully that's sort of a centering influence of thinking they've got to do something. It cannot, surely it cannot go on. What they are up against is the Eight of Wands. Lots of things coming in thick and fast. Things change with this White House virtually on an hourly basis. These are, this is the pressure they're under, right? Things coming thick and fast. What's underneath that? The moon. So it's not only in the conventional sense of um, lies and deceit, it's sort of the unconscious. When it's with positive cards like this, I can't just go lies and deceit. I think you can safely say it's still a degree of self-deception for the GOP, but unconsciously, what are they thinking and what are they working towards? On top of this reading is the Empress. Now, often that's Ivanka, but she's not a player in this context. So I'm going to stick my neck out and say this is Nancy Pelosi. Now Nancy has come on board. Okay. They've realised... They've realised they're dealing with a quite different creature here. They had their own in before and they could fart around and accomplish nothing and give each branch of government nothing to do. And that sort of worked for two years from their point of view. Now 
they have the Empress. Okay, they have the Empress. I am calling this as Nancy Pelosi. That means they have to actually act. Now, for those who have been around for a long time, they'd be thinking, oh my God, they'd be lying, lying down in a darkened room with a wet cloth over their eyes going, oh my God, she's back. For the ones who are new and haven't experienced her, they're going to go, oh, mm, she's tough. Because let's face it, she's the scary one to them, not Schumer. Schumer always comes across as the reasonable guy, but there's something not quite there. He's like the Democrats' version of Pence or something. He's not quite there, Schumer. Um, not nasty like Pence, but, you know, she's the one who has got them worried and got them thinking. The sun is shining. Now, several interpretations of this. It's a GOP layout, so they could be due some time in the sun. They could be coming up with a solution for Trump. It could be that good. Or it can be the other meaning of the sun. The sun is shining on what they've been doing and not doing. That is my preferred interpretation because I see this as Pelosi. So Pelosi is coming along and shining the light on the sheer greed and laziness, the inertia that has taken a grip in the GOP. So that's telling us she is shaking them up. She is shaking them up. But what are they going to do? They're so used to not doing anything. What are they going to do? Okay. Are they going to do something about this man? Are they going to do something? Let's see what this brings to light. The tower. Oh, Okay. Oh, now we're getting to now we're getting to some juicy bits, viewers. Ah, oh, look. Before I get into this reading, the tower is at the centre. The death cards on top. Okay. I'm beginning to think. Where is when you're dealing with someone as crazy as Trump is, right, it can have several effects. It can freak people out. It can paralyze people because you can't deal with a nutter. Um, or it can galvanize people. They sure as hell need some galvanizing. I will say before I get into this, I don't think the GOP is one homogenous animal. It seems to me the Republican Party is very good at hiding their dirty laundry. I think they have, you know, bare knuckle fist fights behind the scene, and then they present the United Front. This is the United Front. Underneath this reading, this has always been my GOP card. We're really just healthy, wholesome families. We just want to do what's right for America. We represent the best of America. All right, that fantasy hotline of the GOP, they're very good at keeping the stuff behind closed doors. And here it is still underneath. But what is it underneath? It's underneath the tower. It's going to crash around them if they do not act absolutely crash around them. Behind them, King of Wands. Who is the King of Wands in the GOP context? I think, I think, I think this has been Mitch McConnell. He's up for an award he could be the second most boring man in America because I think Pence wins that. Every year I think he wins that. I think Mitch McConnell, who appears 
like the second most boring man in America, has always been very good at his job to the point of being almost demonic. He puts up terrible things. He fights dirty. But he comes across as, you know, being a bit old and a bit okay and, you know, he can't really be that bad. And He's the nasty king of wands. The problem is, the problem is, Mitch McConnell doesn't wield the power he wielded three weeks ago. He doesn't wield the power. Since Mattis, since Mattis resigned or was pushed, depending whose point of view you believe, that broke McConnell on some level. That broke McConnell. And he's not the powerhouse he was, but don't underestimate him is my, is my warning. He, he's in sleeping dog mode. He could either drift away, offended. He's sulking now, sulky king, sulky king. Or he could come out firing in the destruction of Trump. Hmm. The death card, death to death to the king, but death to the status quo. It can't keep going, right? It can't keep going. Having said that, if the whole circus keeps going for another month or two months, it'll seem like eternity. You know, I think all Americans have been condemned for this particular hellish time, so please see the light at the end of the tunnel. There will be a post-Trump era. There will, and it'll be a better place for it. But this is looking serious for the GOP. It's looking serious. Outcome, the chariot. Movement. Movement. What are they going to do? So, I'm going to do some clarifiers here. I want to do a clarifier on the King of Wands. If it's Mitch McConnell, what's he going to do? The King of Wands. Hmm, cut and run, that'd be right. McConnell's dirty. McConnell's dirty. So this is the rip-off card. I think he might... It might have been a bridge too far for McConnell, what's been happening lately. I think for the first year, almost two years, he thought, more than anyone, because he has to deal with Trump, he thought, the guy's loony tunes, but we sort of know how to drive him. We can sort of, you know, push him this way, push him that way, just do what we want at the end of the day. But now he doesn't think that anymore. I think he's thinking of cutting and running. I have never thought that before about McConnell. He's thinking about it. Now I want to clarify on the tower. What is it going on for the tower? What's going on? Now the tower, before I put the clarifier out, just have a good look. People leaping out of the tower. This is the people, the good people and the bad who are leaving the Trump White House, right? So let's come down and look at what the clarifier is on that, out in the cold. Right. So basically anyone who works either in Trump Tower, who will be under subpoena or indictment from Mueller, but in the White House, they know Mueller is coming at them. They know if they stay, they're going to be out in the cold. I think you're just simply going to see more resignations there. Now, the chariot means movement for direction. Not always in control of that movement, but what is the chariot about? What movement are we going to see from the Republicans? What's the movement going to be? 
Hmm. Okay. Here's what I think, viewers. It's the Four of Cups. The unwelcome opportunity. Unwelcome. I'm going... My feel on this is... This is the first time, I think, and I think it's connected to McConnell. Okay, here's what I'm intuiting here. I think McConnell is going to go to Trump and go, either you go or I go. Oh. Hmm. I think McConnell's actually had enough. I don't know. I think this might be the first time they're going to him with you go or I go. Now, I don't think that's going to lead to Trump going, oh, I've screwed up. I've been so bad. You know, of course I'm going to go. You stay, Mitch. No, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Because Trump can't see the writing on the wall. That's just not how he is. This is their first time, though, they've said, big time, we want you to go. And I think it will freak him out. He won't go. It'll get worse. And then I'll have to go. But I think this is the first time. I think it's the first time. Blessed be, may we all light candles that the GOP is coming out of the coma and, and trying to do something about him. I think they have to try this. They have to try this. Going, you know, the Democrats are in now. You're looking at an impeachment. You know, the, the first round of real discussions about this are going to take place. He's going to just take more drugs and fight them off. But it's the beginning of another stage of the end. Oh, well, I think that's quite interesting, folks. So I'm going to load this up and then, 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 I'm going to load the one on Russia because with all this and the horrible stuff that's happening with holding the federal workers hostage and the hideous stuff with the wall, we've all taken our eye off Russia. But we have to keep it. It's all part of the thousand cuts. Okay. Please, please, please look after yourselves. You know I read all your comments. Love the comments. Keep the comments flowing. And look, blessings for 2019. It will unfold. Be good to yourself. Be good to those close to you. Be good to strangers. Sometimes a bit of altruistic kindness. Moi, moi. Speak soon. Bye.